Hey guys, it's your boy here, and these are the 5 things that I learned from E.G. Fear's Bloodseeker. 1. Midas is not the only option. I know a lot of people get tempted in going Midas on Bloodseeker. He farms very fast, and in a way the Midas is a form of safety in case your early game goes bad. But you can't deny that he also hinders your early aggression, which is your best power spike, in my opinion. If you want to go Midas, you have to at least get boots in the early game. He has 420 move speed with it, and it completely discourages the puck from last hitting close to him, and at level 5 he gets a solo kill. Check how by getting the third point in Thirst, he can dive the puck and have enough damage to kill him without even popping the Blood Rage. A lot of people would actually pop the Blood Rage before diving, and while it gives you more damage, it also increases the chances he dies if someone is hidden in the trees for instance, or if he just gets juked a lot. Check out he only pops the Blood Rage in the end to heal from the kill. Another important point of discussion of this dive is how he only goes for it after the puck used his orb. But he doesn't dive him right away, he just plays cool and he knows that if the puck gets even a little bit greedy he can get the kill with his 480 move speed that, let me remind you, are only that high because of his early boots of speed. Check this other clip, he just killed the axe and he's just casually strolling with 500 move speed back to his tower. Power Treads is very good on Bloodseeker, since all that extra damage is amplified a lot through your attack speed. But you can't deny that since Bloodseeker has no speed cap, his move speed gets even more amplified with face boots. And check again how by only using the orb, Puck is instantly dead. Not even the Murana ult helps the little fairy dragon. By only using the orb, Puck is instantly dead because of the ridiculous damage and move speed of the Bloodseeker. Not even the Murana ult helps the little fairy dragon. Shadows take us. Tower is under attack. 2. He's a lane dominator against low base damage heroes. Bloodseeker is a hero that is almost often played in the jungle because he was known for a long time for being good in that role. But the hero do have uses outside of the jungle that many people ignore. Since he gets extra damage and can regen by using his Q, and he has very good base damage, so against heroes like Quasvax Invoker, Puck, Timbersaw, he can completely dominate the lane because as levels go on, not only he can less hit and deny everything, but he can also bully the Puck out of the lane very effectively and heal every damage he takes from the creeps for instance. The hero is also extremely good against mobile blinking heroes like AM, Quop. In this game, I'm pretty sure Fear picked the hero because of its easy time in the mid lane against Puck, as well as the, as well as the possibility to hard counter the Anti-Mage and the Mirana. The trick to destroy the lane against these low base damage heroes is to get a poor man shield, or in case you're against a hero like Zeus or Batrider, a magic wand, and then carefully use your Blood Rage when you're about to either last hit or deny the creeps. Check how Fear only uses the Blood Rage when he's going for that last hit. The weak point of Bloodseeker is before level 3, since your enemy can abuse that you don't have Blood Rage on the entire time to get you so low that you need to get out of the lane or you're going to feed. But it's seriously hard for a Puck to do that, and with the Cell, Fear is extra prepared to anything Radiant can throw at him. As long as you're confident in your last hit capabilities and the enemy has very low base damage, it's almost impossible for you to lose the lane. A lot of people understand and know that part of the hero, so they get very focused on only less hitting and denying, and while that is good, you can abuse the strength of the Bloodseeker even further. Fear knows that he can take the puck out of the lane here, and then he will regen every drop of HP he loses by the creeps harassing him. And as the enemy hero gets lower in HP, he has to choose to either risk dying or going back to base. 3. Bloodseeker as a counter to AM. It doesn't matter how good the AM lane was, it doesn't matter if he didn't miss one single last hit. Bloodseeker is ridiculously strong against AM and at the early game, he can kill the AM by himself if he plays correctly. Usually people use Blood Rage on themselves to then deal more damage with Rupture when the AM blinks, but here he actually uses the Blood Rage on the Anti-Mage so that his entire team could do more damage to him. Even though it really doesn't make that much difference since the AM was dead anyways, it's a pretty good thing to do when you're ganking with more people if you actually have the range to use the Blood Rage before the AM blinks. Oh, 
We can see how invested he is on killing the AM. He even wars the Radiant Jungle. Even though he doesn't get the AM, killing the X means a slower blink dagger and also means that he keeps his ball rolling. Yes, you can farm the jungle really fast and maybe you can farm a Radiance in 10 minutes, I don't know. But his strength is not that of a very late game 6 blooded hero. His strength is completely trampling the early laning phase and abusing his very low cooldown ult. In this other clip we see how easy it is for him to kill the AM. This time, just to be sure, he uses the Blood Rage before ulting, since the AM is probably going to be more aware of his surroundings. Even though Bloodseeker is very good against AM and a very mobile hero, it will get to a point during the game where you just can't chase or find the AM, because if he's half decent, he will be moving and farming so fast that it will be hard for you to get him. And Fear does something very interesting. Instead of just chasing him from the map the entire game, he just sits on the complete opposite side of the map, even though he has a TP scroll and vision of the AM. Most of the Bloodseekers would have TP'd and tried to gank him, but instead he knows that the AM is afraid and very forward, so it's pretty likely that he will just retreat and maybe go to his jungle to farm later. And he actually was right, and gets the kill. Despite not being the best late game core, he is definitely an anti-core as well as a core enabler. With heroes that can deal multiple damage safely, using Blood Rage really increases their damage in all stages of the game for 0 mana on a decent range. So Faceless Void is definitely a good example of a hero that can use the Blood Rage reliably during Chronosphere without being susceptible to the negative side of the skill. Other good combinations are Enigma, Queen of Pain, Zeus, Blood Rage is a good skill, but it's not your only option in lane. As I said, the weak point of Bloodseeker is usually until level 3, because if you mess up, you can, get, you can get zoned out of the lane and sent back to Fountain. But Fear is winning this matchup so handedly that he doesn't need the lower cooldown on Blood Rage. He can always regen back to foe with no struggles. So by getting level 2 in Thirst, he can zone the puck out of the lane even further. Hey guys, this is it for today, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, if you want to see similar videos like replay breakdowns, check the link in the description, I can't overstate how this video would not never be possible without the huge help from the Pugna guys, so show them some love, and if you're new to my channel please subscribe to it, I'm making videos like this almost every day and I'm sure something here will spark your interest. Bye guys. never had a patch where she was considered a tier 1 hero. It's actually pretty surprising to me that he was so ignored at tier 6 considering she's pretty decent with Draw Ranger, as well as being a good counter in lane to Timbersaw, Invoker, and having ways of contesting Roshan, and in my opinion being even good against Murana. Anyway, enough of my rant. In this game I think they gave TA to Artur because not only it is good against Timber in lane, but the two roamers from Radiant don't have damage over time which means that if Arthur plays safe, it's very hard for him to be ganked by Fantastic Five. You might be wondering why TA is a good hero against Timber in lane since he's so good against physical damage and that's all TA provides. But what many 